So in this video, I thought we'd look at some of the sensors and circuitry that you're going to need to actually get your ESP up and running. This is how we're going to get the information out of the engine. So the temperature sensor, the RPM sensor, and the few other sensors that I've now got set up. So let's make a start with RPM. So initially, I started to look at Hall effect sensors, which basically looks for a magnetic um, signal every time something rotates. This would mean sticking something to the engine, to a rotating part, and also mounting the sensor pretty close to it so that it would pick it up. After a little bit of research, I found a couple of different examples on the web, and I found this example where it's using the alternator's W terminal to detect spikes and therefore turning it into some sort of signal. The different circuits look quite similar, but this one in particular looks quite good because there's a break um, here with this octocoupler, which means that it uses light to transfer the signal from one part of the circuit to another, meaning that everything on the ESP would be separated from everything on the alternator. And that means I can just disconnect it if it doesn't work correctly or something goes wrong. Having no real experience of this circuit and how it works, I decided to look for um, a circuit simulator on the web and I found this one here so I'll post the link in the bottom. Basically I've set the circuit up in here and you can now see actually what it's doing. So the alternator outputs around 9 volts of AC, well it, do it does on mine anyway, and you can see it's pulsing backwards and forwards so it's not a DC circuit, it's not going in one direction. So as it pulses backwards and forwards this little diode only means that we get a circuit and therefore the light turning on on the left of the small um, octocoupler when the circuit is going in one way. As that happens, at the other side we create a voltage, so we get an on and off, which is something the ESP can read. There may be other ways to do this, but what is nice about this is that the voltage that is going back to the ESP is no more than 3 volts, which is really key because you'll just basically fry it. So here's the circuit in build and you can clearly see the break there where the octocoupler is going to sit and when we turn it over it's just a couple of resistors and a diode. So if we now take a look at the exhaust sensor which is just a digital one wire sensor. These are really easy sensors to use and I've used them on the Raspberry Pi. You've basically got three wires, a negative, a positive and a signal and the resistor goes between the positive and the signal. This little board I've set up here will allow me to connect a couple of different sensors and the pins you can see at the back towards where the connector is is basically a power breakout because the ESP doesn't have very many output power pins. They're really accurate, they need very few lines of code and they're relatively cheap and they can measure up to around 100 degrees Celsius. So if we take a look at the engine temperature sensor, this one was a little bit more complicated. The circuit itself is dead simple. You basically are using a voltage divider circuit, which again you can see set up here in the circuit simulator. As the resistance changes on the bottom temperature sensor, the voltage that is sent out to the ESP sensor pin rises or falls. It's as simple as that. The difficulty is, is calibration. So as you can see here, I've got a 100 ohm resistor at the top and I'm sliding the temperature up and down and you can see the voltage uh, to the output pin is changing. So that's all you need on that side. What is key is trying to understand the resistance of the temperature sensor you're going to use. Now you might be lucky here and you might find one that has a handy diagram showing the resistance and the temperature. Um, I got this bit of information here but it's not all that accurate because I've got to try and work out where the actual marks are and what that ohm value actually is. So that's the first challenge. What I actually did then was to replace the sensor with a resistor on that side. So I had two known resistor values. So what I did then was to put a 100 ohm resistor as the temperature sensor. Use that to, to calibrate everything to make sure that I was getting 70 degrees because that's what my voltage circuit and my temperature sensor should be giving me at that point and adjusted the values in the code to match. It turned out that with that configuration, mine was actually reading about 125 ohms. So I adjusted the values in the script to allow for that difference. One other handy tip I can give here is if you comment out the two highlighted lines here with two forward slashes at the start, it'll just give you the output of the voltage divider. And that was what I used to see how far out the um, ohm value was. 
So what it'll do is the output from the voltage divider calculation will be sent as the SK output float propulsion engine temperature. So the value you see there will actually be the resistance value that it thinks is the bottom half of that circuit and that really helped me calculate those uh, those resistance values. And finally engine room temperature and pressure. Again this is an off-the-shelf sensor so you just need to power it um, and provide uh, an SDA and an SCL output so one data and one clock and you'll see the corresponding pins for that on the ESP32. Basically plug and play. So I'm just understanding where everything's going to sit so I put this in last time, so when I did all the work on the, on the pipes um, and drain the coolant out, I put a temperature sensor in. So now we can wire the two uh, wires from this little circuit board down here, which is a voltage divider, to the temperature sensor. And that should read the temperature. And then I'm going to use a um, waterproof uh, one wire temperature sensor. And I'm going to attach that like that with a Jubilee clip. So that hopefully will detect any changes in temperature there. Because um, that's normally quite cold, actually. This is the, 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 the coolant comes out here, so you, it, it shouldn't be that hot. So if, if it starts getting really hot really quick, then we can hopefully pick that up with that temperature sensor. Because that's uh, detecting it every one, minute, uh, one second. And then I have got... This is a, a little... There's another temperature sensor. That's just going to pick up. Um, room temperature, so so engine room temperature. So wherever wherever I stick that, um, I'll just attach that to the front of the case. And then this last little bit of circuitry is to pick up the pulse that comes off the back of the alternator. So I need to just wire that in as you would the uh, an RPM counter, and that should then give me how fast the engine's running. So the RPM of the engine. I've got to obviously calibrate it, but I have got a working gauge, so I can work out what that is and then really i just need to define the place really so i could mount it i could make a case and stick it to the side of there put a bit of velcro on that because that that stays relatively cool or i could put it maybe around on this face here um, and then just run the wires because again i want to be able to remove it if so so if that came over this way that could kind of come down make a little bit of a wiring loom and it could just basically sit here i want to try and pick up power from from the engine somehow so i might just uh, tap in somewhere here but again as I say, I want to make sure that, that it doesn't interfere with any of the engine electronics, really. Um, so it's, it's got to be all self-contained, so it could be taken off if something went wrong. Okay, so in the test we've just done, we have connected this red wire here. So this is onto the uh, little circuit here that's, that's measuring um, the RPM of the engine. And then I just need to earth that out. But what I wanted is obviously double check that that didn't affect the rev counter that's already in the panel and it doesn't so that that's working really well so i'll share the circuitry there that, that's doing that there is a, a little um isolator here this is um an optocoupler i think it's called um so it uses like light to transmit the data across so um as long as obviously this circuitry this side wasn't causing anything and I'm, I'm not that up on this um which is why i've done it the way i have so i just wanted to double check that that wasn't making any difference or shorting anything out changing the output of the alternator or um, anything like that um, or, or like I say making the RPM gauge not work which is I, I don't want that either um, but it isn't so that's working so that's why this is just on a bit of a test lead so I need to wire that in properly I need to earth this out and then that works and um, I was just playing with the temperature sender so these two wires are on the temperature sender and that's reading correctly my exhaust just need uh, sorry my exhaust temperature sensor just needs clamping to this that water is just just going straight into the exhaust so we want to see that and obviously if that changes and that starts going up then we know we've got a problem so that that's all working this will just be attached to the front of the case that's just measuring the temperature actually in this space itself um, so that's all working really well and we've got runtime as well from the little um, sensor there so every time we turn that on once it's wired in properly I'm not running off this little power bank once that's wired in properly that'll give us a sort of true running time as well which I can then record um, so yeah, working really well.